for me, it's it's common. It's very much a meditation kind of process. It's a fun little dialogue because it's not so much what you're forcing the clay to do, but it's more like you suggesting, you know, or like when you push on it a certain way, the clay is going to do its own thing. It's learning that language, like how you communicate with the piece. That's interesting to me. One of the exciting aspects, I would say, is that everything controls everything else. Soils are where the geology, um, hydrology, atmosphere, uh, the biosphere, vegetation, animals, everything in the world, soils is where all of it interacts. general levels of soil science you can look at, starting at the physical level of physically the particles in the soil and how they interact, and uh, that's a lot the, dealing with the, for example, ceramic artists. A lot of the chemistry that's involved with clay especially controls the way they do things. Then we will also go to several of those for the chemical level as well as uh, biological level. Everything from kiln, chemistry and kiln environments to, uh, to chemistry of the glazes, every every little nuance of uh, of ceramics is, I think, based in some sort of field of chemistry. Looks like this kind of a green and blue, but when you put it on top of the Lau Luster carbon trap, it becomes this super shiny green red combination and it kind of it can go anywhere from you know this color to this color inches apart as far as it being kind of like a primitive kind of childish kind of fun I think there's something there's an innocence to that that's worth holding on to, you know, it's kind of like that, you know, it's that silly fun thing that you, you always go back to, whether it's like a coloring book or something that you enjoy that's, you know, something from your childhood. I think that, you know, clay is so entrenched in culture, like the, some of the, the oldest remnants of human civilization are shards of clay, you know, shards of pottery, and I think there's, you know, there's something, you know, deeply ingrained in our culture all culture that you know it's kind of based around this pottery you know it's kind of it, it bridges that gap through time one of the things that really aids in the appreciation of these monoliths is actually understanding why they got that way so not necessarily just that you have these different colors mm -hmm. but the understanding of the specific environment in which these soils can form Oh, yeah. and the um, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of years that it took to form them, mm -hmm. um, that's the aspect of them that is truly mind-shattering. One of the biggest challenges to scientists is presenting things in a way that is both interesting and easy to understand, and so I think definitely scientists could do to present data in much the same way that she's arranging some of her art installations in ways that are both intuitive and scientifically relevant. Um, ways that are, I just say, if you present things artistically, they're much easier to grasp. And uh, yeah, that's something we could learn uh, quite a bit more from, from artists of how to present. I generally has a little bit more of an aesthetical quality to it. You know, it's looking for a certain quality in the way something looks, where science is more looking at, I, I want to say like a structure, like maybe, you know, what's involved 
so maybe it's it's more process based. I'm not sure, but I know that you know I can, you know, through my own practice, I definitely can see how one cannot survive without the other. You know, science science takes a certain amount of creativity and and uh, spontaneity in order to move forward, and I and art is the same way. It needs a certain amount of science in order to understand it. So I think yeah, I absolutely think they're intermingled.